I work for Euroclio, which is the European Association of History Educators. And we work together with Uscreen on the selection of um, some of the film clips that can be used for history education uh, across Europe. So at the moment we're in the process of identifying which clips can be matched with the learning activities that we are developing. So at the moment we have a project uh, to work on the history of European integration and we want to um, help students to get a sense of what Europe was like when the European integration started, so post-war Europe. And we've been working together to um, identify clips that are, can be put under specific headings, such as hunger and hardship, life under new regimes, uh, destruction of infrastructure, um, denazification, never again, but also life goes on. So we want to show that um, yeah, Europe had different things that were happening at the same time. And I think video is a very strong medium to convey that message. So Euroclio has been working on the collection of uh, historians' quotes on uh, photographs, statistics, and now that we couldn't access the audiovisual material. So that's why we started uh, this cooperation with uh, Uscreen. And the people from Uscreen, they know their own collections, but they can also help us uh, to remove some barriers, such as language, um, but also copyright issues, and to make sure that the, the sources can really be used in the classroom. Because that is, at the moment, I think, the biggest obstacle. There's a lot of relevant and interesting material on Uscreen, but if you can't download the material, if you don't have like the translations provided, then you're stuck to only the materials that um, you already have and then via the National Archives. So I think there's a huge potential for Uscreen to unlock the sources and to um, provide a bigger story than just a traditional national narrative. Mm -hmm. So if you can compare, for example, how the fall of the Berlin Wall was reported, which is another topic, uh, that we're working on with you screen um, and you see okay it's in every country they put different emphasis they select different materials they have different narratives at the same time but also later i think you will also be more critical when you start to look at the news because selections have been made and different narratives could be told so that's why i think um yeah, the use of video has uh, is really great. That's why we put in a lot of effort and why Uscreen puts in a lot of effort that we can really have this critical approach. Mm -hmm. And But that implies using the videos rather than just showing a video and saying, okay, now the video is there instead of the textbook. So that's what we try to tackle. It really depends on your learning outcomes. If you want to see, okay, what was the government's reaction to a certain issue, but then the official videos would be quite good. If you're thinking about, okay, what, what was life like at a certain point, mm -hmm. then the home videos might offer a, a different angle. So usually I, I would prefer a mix. You always have to make selections. So there's always an agenda. It can be a very open and transparent agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen examples of that uh, during this conference about um, the, the clips, for example, or, or Mr. Ferro, who was doing parallel histories, showing, okay, this is what we want to debate, now let's look at different news clips. I was really impressed with, with that approach, and I, I didn't know it existed. I knew his book, but I didn't know uh, TV. So in that case, there's also an agenda, but it's clear what the agenda is. With propaganda, it's for, it's, you need to recognize it, but it's, um, it's not said so explicitly in the beginning. So that's a big difference. But usually, I think that's also with newspapers. You basically know it's the liberal newspaper, it's the left-wing newspaper. So they write from a certain angle. And I think transparency in that uh, respect is the best. Um, but since you talk about like propaganda and bias, I've seen an, one of the most impressive uh, uses of videos was in the Haus der Geschichte in, uh, in Berlin. Basically, they showed how historical events were unfolding, but then all the time juxtaposing the West, um, Western view and the Eastern view.
and there was coverage of the same events. And some facts were similar, but very often the meaning that was given and the subtext was very different. The choice of the images was very different. Um, and I think if you learn history in that way, then you, you start to challenge. So not just showing, okay, this is how it really happened, or this is like a documentary and you have to learn that to acquire knowledge, um, but showing, okay, this is one way of seeing the history. And, and I think that was very strong. So if you talk about propaganda, there's a real potential to use audiovisual material to become more sensible, uh, sensitized to that and to resist man manipulation. Because in the end, that, that's what we want, what we believe in as an organization.